Hey, what's up, mortals? It's Miggy Sawdust here with a new video for you. Welcome to Season 1, Episode 3 of What If Bakugo Died. I just wanted to greet you all by just saying sit back and relax. You're in for a treat. Let's get started. Deku woke up to a gray sky. It was going to rain today. He slowly got dressed. Every movement was sluggish. He put on his school uniform and tried to comb through his curly hair. Looking in the mirror, Deku thought he looked presentable enough, except for the dark circles under his eyes. Oh well, nothing much he could do about that. He quickly splashed cold water on his face. Maybe that would help. He wanted to look his best when meeting with Bakugo's parents. The meeting wasn't technically formal, but it deserved to be treated with respect. He got a lump in his throat thinking about what he'd say. All night he had tossed and turned, feeling queasy and rehearsing the moment over and over again. He had finally given up on sleep and he started to write in his hero notebook. As he scribbled down notes of the USJ incident, he had also started to write about his classmates. Bad habit of his, Deku was always analyzing and predicting things about heroes. His classmates were no different. He had notes on everyone. He had added to his section about Kirishima, Todoroki, and Ida and then he flipped to his page on Bakugo. Since he had known Bakugo from an early age, Deku had a lot of notes on his quirk. He had even been there when Bakugo's quirk first manifested. And although All Might was the one who inspired Deku to first start taking his hero notes, he had only started to keep his journals after observing Bakugo. Now, looking back at what he had written, Deku decided to bring his notebook with him to the meeting. It was his Hero Analysis for the Future, number 13 book. The pages were a bit torn and singed, a result from Bakugo damaging it. Deku smiled. Ah, memories. Yes, he would bring this. Deku quickly packed his bag, ran to the kitchen and kissed his mother goodbye. He was running a bit late. He hoped he could make it to UA on time. He sprinted out the door. When he finally reached the school a bit out of breath, he saw that the others were already waiting for him. Ida waved him over. As always, Ida's uniform was impeccable. His tie was straight, his shoes were shined, and his shirt looked to be freshly ironed. Kirishima looked up and gave him a big, shark-toothed grin. Midoriya, there you are! We're about to go in! Kirishima looked better than he had the day before. His hair was spiked up. He had a bit more color in his face and his mannerisms were a bit more relaxed. Deku noticed, though, that his hands were still shaking a bit. Todoroki nodded to Deku in greeting. Deku couldn't get a read on how Todoroki was feeling. He looked about the same as he always did, a stoic face that betrayed no emotion and polite yet reserved body language. His scar was still a bit more pink than usual, but other than that, nothing was out of place. Should we go in? he asked. Yes, I think so. Ida replied. He led the way into the school, down the hall, and to their classroom 1A. Inside, the desk had been arranged into a small circle. Principal Nezu was sitting at a desk, All Might and Recover Girl beside him. Across from them were Bakugo's parents, Mitsuki and Masaru. Ah, welcome, boys, Principal Nezu said. Please have a seat and we shall begin. Deku sat down at the desk next to All Might. He gave a small smile to his mentor. All Might smiled back. Deku wondered if All Might was okay. Besides the physical strain of the USJ attack, he must also be mentally worn out. Could he keep up his strong form for this meeting? As if sensing his thoughts, All Might nudged Deku. It will be okay, young Midoriya, he whispered. Deku nodded and looked down. Principal Nezu began speaking again once everyone was comfortable, or, at least, as comfortable as one could get sitting in a high school desk. Thank you all for coming. As you know, we have a lot to discuss. I want to open first by giving my deepest apologies and sympathy to the Bakugo family. Your son was one of the most dedicated students I've ever had the pleasure of enrolling here at UA. Principal Nezu stood on his desk and bowed. I'm so sorry that we could not protect him like we should have been able to. Masaru spoke first. Kids, 
Katsuki believed in Yue with all his heart. This school makes heroes. I don't think he would have traded his time here for anything. His voice broke and his wife had to take over for him. We won't fault Yue with our son's death. It was the villains who were responsible. All that we ask is that you continue to train the best heroes so that someday you can bring those scumbags to justice. <sighs> Principal Nezu nodded. Thank you for your kind words. Nevertheless, we shared some of the blame. It is our job to protect the students here, and we failed to do that. I know this could never make up for the loss of your son, but we will cover the costs for his funeral, and we'll help you out however we can. Bakugo's parents nodded. They were both blinking hard trying to keep the tears at bay. Deku never liked seeing others cry, but for some reason it was even more painful to look at them holding back their emotions. All Might spoke up. I want to apologize as well. Young Bakuga was a very promising young man. He had a lot of dedication and was truly a hero. I tried to stop the villains, but in the end it was the students who had to protect me. He hung his head in shame. Well, don't you deserve to be protected for once? Misuki asked. I mean, how many times have you saved us all? I think it's only right that you accept help from time to time. Katsuki really looked up to you. To be able to fight for you was probably the greatest honor you could have given him. All Might swallowed hard. Thank you for saying that. Recovery Girl leaned over and patted All Might on the back. It was almost comical at how such a small, frail old lady could be lending strength to a big, strong superhero. But Deku knew better than anyone that heroes came in all shapes and sizes. He took a breath. <sighs> Excuse me, but I just wanted to say a few things. Before we get back to the video, I'd like to talk about our new channel, Celestia, our channel dedicated to all things Dungeons & Dragons. Currently, we have a series breaking down the different spells in D&D, and soon we'll be starting some new series as well. So if you're a fan of D&D, or have an interest in learning about it, go check it out. Additionally, if there's something you've always wanted to see get made into a video, head over there and leave a comment mentioning it. Go on, dear, Recover Girl encouraged. Well, uh, well, I wanted to let you know first, Mr. and Mrs. Bakugo, that, that Kachan saved my life. He... He pushed me out of the way and took the blow from me. If it wasn't for me... Deku's breath hitched. He was starting to tear up, but he couldn't stop now. He had to say his piece. If it wasn't for me, Kachan would still be alive. The room was silent for a moment before Deku pressed on. But, but I won't let his sacrifice be in vain. I will find those villains who did this and lock them up for good. I'll be the greatest hero. A hero with the name Kachan gave me. Deku. Kirishima nodded and sniffled. I'll, I'll be the greatest too. For him. Bakugo really inspired me. I'm not the bravest or the strongest, but he really was. He was the real thing. I looked up to him so much. I only regret I couldn't have been a better friend to him. When push came to shove, I froze. I didn't do anything. But, but Bakugo rushed headlong into danger without a second thought. Masaru gave a weak chuckle. <laughs> that sounds like our boy, all right. He never hesitated in anything. Bakugo really surprised me, Edith spoke up. When I first met him, he was so nonchalant that I thought he didn't care about school or putting in the work. But he excelled at everything and was always the most determined. His work ethic rivaled anyone's in our class. I apologize for not valuing him as I should have. Mitsuki got up from her seat. Her face was contorted into an expression that Deku couldn't read. For a horrible moment, he thought she was angry, but then she walked over to each of the boys and hugged them. One by one. You dummies, how many times do we have to say it? There's no need to apologize for anything. Someone gasped. Deku looked up and was surprised to see that it was Todoroki. Mitsuki had made her way over to him and embraced him. Todoroki hadn't said anything in the time they'd been at the school, but now he clung to Mitsuki as if his life depended on it. 
His breaths came out fast, and he struggled to maintain his composure. How, how can you be so forgiving? he asked. Mitsuki released him and looked at him with such compassion that Deku had to hold back sobs as well. You're all just kids. You're going to make mistakes and have regrets on the path you're taking. You'll also get hurt. But you have the hearts of true heroes, and I'm proud that my son was able to meet you all. Masaru put a hand on his wife's shoulder. We all know you cared about Kasuki. And that's why we wanted to let you know that we don't blame any of you for what happened. In fact, we'd like you to come to the funeral, along with all the students and faculty who knew our son. Will you come? Mitsuki asked. Of course, dears, Recovery Girl said. Yes, Principal Nezu answered, and I will spread the word to the rest of Katsuki's teachers and classmates. I would be honored to attend, All Might said. Daku looked to his classmates. Kirishima was looking at the floor. Ida was staring straight ahead in a futile attempt to keep his emotions under control. Todoroki was trembling. Deku lightly touched his arm. It's okay, he said. Let it all out. There's no need to keep up appearances. It's fine to grieve. Todoroki looked at him, and a single tear traced its way down his face. I don't deserve the right to mourn, he said. I barely knew Bakugo. Ida sighed. Oh, of course you deserve to be sad. Whether or not you knew him well doesn't matter. He still made an impact on your life. Ida's own defenses were coming down. He had to take off his glasses to wipe the tears from his eyes. Yeah, Kirishima agreed. I'm gonna miss Bakugo. I'm devastated that he's gone, but right now... I think I'm mourning the fact that I'll never get to learn more about him or become a better friend to him. It's selfish, I know. I'm really only thinking about myself. We all grieve in our own ways, Deku murmured. He pulled out his hero notebook. Slowly, carefully, he handed it to Bakugo's parents. I wrote most of this down last night. Katsun was my hero. I wanted to express that somehow. I hope that this is okay. Mitsuki and Masaru looked it over in silence. When they were done, Mitsuki put a hand over her mouth. Masaru took a shaky breath and looked at Deku. Y you said you wrote this? Deku nodded. It's, it's beautiful, Mitsuki said, a sob escaping her throat. Deku blushed and looked away. Will you read it at the funeral? Mitsuki asked. Please, it, it would mean so much to us. Sure, Deku answered. It, it would be my pleasure. And all of you, Masaru addressed Ida, Todoroki, and Kirishima. Would you all say a word about Kasuki too? Ida swallowed hard. Of course. Kirishima smiled a little. No problem. Mitsuki looked to Todoroki. Todoroki met her eyes. This time, he let his tears fall freely. I will. There was a bit more talk of funeral preparations and plans, and then the meeting had ended. Deku felt numb, but there was more hope in the atmosphere than before. As everyone made their way out, All Might stopped Deku at the door. Young Midoriya, I am so proud of you. You are going to make a fine hero. Better than me. Deku gulped, and then he reached out and gave All Might a hug. We'll all be heroes. The best there is. All Might returned the embrace and then left the room. Deku could see it was getting harder for him to maintain his form. Now the only ones left were him, Ida, Kirishima, and Todoroki. The boys looked at each other for a moment, their gazes filled with more than mere words could convey, and then they each headed home. There was work to be done so they could honor their friend. Thank you all so much for sticking around to the end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Now, there are a few things that I'd just like to go over before the video ends. Firstly, if you're in the mood for some great storytelling, We the Celestials has got you covered. Our We the Celestials, My Hero Academia, and Naruto What If channels retell the stories of their namesake anime with a twist. Check it out if you're interested. 
Secondly, on behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details can be found in the description below. And lastly, if you're interested in what we do here at We the Celestials, then I'd like to extend an invitation to you to join the team. The only caveat being that we only accept members ages 16 and up to join the crew. You can sign up for whatever category fulfills your interest by joining the recruitment discord using the link in the description below. We're always looking for members to join us. Well, that's it for today's video. Thank you all so much and have a divine day.